Hello. Hello. these notifications for oh. I don't need to know anything about the emotional damages. Oh shit! You're here. I didn't. I didn't know. Uh, <laughs> I, I was. Uh, I, I was like. I wasn't wearing uh, any uh, my headphones. I was out. Uh, I was making coffee. Yeah. 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 So I, I, I was playing Pocket Mirror and then I had to stop because I was literally falling asleep. Oh yeah. <laughs> no. Uh... Yeah. Oh yeah, sure. That way you can see some of the, the stuff. Hmm. Uh, is that is it something I can show on stream or? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. Then hold up. Let me uh. Let me figure out how to not fuck this up. Um. Uh, uh, hold on, let me. I don't want anyone viewing my bank statements. Oh, yeah, no, don't. Uh... <laughs> I don't also, I also don't want. I mean, to be fair, my chat is completely empty, but like. <laughs> you know, uh, you never know who's watching. Hmm. Huh. Okay. Well, I guess that's not something. Okay. Well, that didn't work. Um. Shit. How am I going to show this? Uh, okay. Well, I'm there gonna... go. Oh, there you go. Hmm. I'm gonna see if the, uh... Okay, well, I'm gonna have to, uh... Use this play capture, I guess. As much as I don't want to. Uh, what am I looking at? Oh my god. Uh, 
and hold on uh i need to see how this looks because i'm not entirely sure nope nope that it that does not look great like at all uh okay um oh well no shit this doesn't look good it's like like way off screen what oh my god oh this is so trippy oh this is hurting my eyes what in the actual hell um uh oh wow that's the illuminati shit right there yeah that that i already feel like i'm on drugs i don't need to like i i don't need something else to do that um yeah uh i'll move myself actually let me grab the um sorry i got an idea Well, first, uh, okay, well, this is gonna, I think this is the kind of, uh, hold on, let me, first, oh, uh, the... are you trying to get it to fit? Uh, yes, and I'm also trying to, like, add, like, your reactive. Uh, but I'm forgetting which one it is because I'm stupid browser. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Oh God, what have I done? There we go. And I'm behind the damn thing because of course I am. Uh now I wanna turn down um uh opera on my end. Cause that music that I have in my background is loud. Yeah. Let me uh, just see how it looks like on the stream because I can't really check that through OBS. Okay, yeah, that should be fine. You can see my taskbar, but you know what? Who fucking cares at this point? <laughs> <sighs> but how you been, man? Uh, pretty good. I was, uh... Aside from... Almost falling asleep earlier. I am desperately in need of coffee. <laughs> well, you also got a friend here too, so yeah, that'll keep you awake as well. Yeah, yeah. Like earlier, I was with uh, I was I was playing Yu-Gi-Oh with a friend, and uh, I, <laughs> I hope I hope I literally used Black Hole and then like used Monster Reborn on a, a Treeborn Frog. Oh, and yeah. like, and he had like 100 life points left, so I was about to attack him. Uh, speaking of Yu-Gi-Oh, I actually participated in a tournament today. Oh, nice! Got absolutely creamed. As expected. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was uh, because uh, I work at a board game shop now. Oh shit! And uh, we are um an officially licensed store by both Konami and Wizards. Uh and uh games workshop. Uh are you looking for people to hire? I will literally fly there. <laughs> no. Fuck. Uh, you do not want this job because it's minimum wage. Oh, okay. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is a job that I am just gonna have until I graduate. Uh okay. So you can see my cam, right? Yeah. See your beautiful hands. So. 
let me grab my f flashlight here because I need to uh, find where I put the case file. Oh, no, I'm staring right at it. So, this is the case file that we got to deal with. Mm -hmm. If I can... Okay. I'm going to move my keyboard to the side real quick. There we go. But yeah, this is the, uh... Flip my... Actually, let me open up my camera settings. So that way I can flip it vertically for you guys. We want to grab my glasses while also making sure that this mug doesn't fall. Because it's like it's halfway like off the like table yeah yeah Vices. if this falls i'm fucked okay there you go Uh, I'm just gonna quickly check. Okay, six hours. Yeah, we got all the time in the world. Mm. Alright, uh. Cameras, here we go. camera real quick and then re-enable it mm, yep oh, it's shit. still backwards though for you isn't it uh, <laughs> a little bit uh it's fine i think it's supposed to say seattle oh yeah 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 that's actually what it yeah. Yeah, it's good. Oh, it's good on, on your end? Yeah, yeah, it says Seattle. Okay. You, you can you can see it from my stream. Oh, I see, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Awesome. Cool, yeah. But so, basically, uh, I'm going to go ahead and read this to you real quick. Or, uh, as we go through... As I pull out evidence, I'm going to go to my printer that's in that fun. direction. Mm. And then uh, I'm going to scan it and send it to you. Oh, okay. So that way you're not left, you're not like left in the dark. You got like a better view. Mm. Yep. There we go. And all right. Uh, okay. 
Come on. Cannon, open up. It's thinking. Cool. But basically, um, so the rules of this is basically, um, we've been sent this case file to look over and we are not limited to what's in the file. Mm. We are allowed to use whatever resources necessary so we can look up things up on the internet and we can also use our phones to call whatever phone number is provided. I see. I was I was literally about to say, all oh, right, it's Google time. And then like, yeah, it's, it's literally Google time. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to scan this area. It's scanning. No, I didn't want it to copy it. Stupid. Oh well, that's already doing it. I got two copies. Ah, 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 ah. Um, start my image garden. There we go. while we wait for that to go on. So, I want to read this to you. Um, so, it says, Dear Detective, by the time the police reached, uh, by the time the police reached the body of Dan Killian, he had flatlined, he had flatlined, flat being the operative word here. He fell 12 stories to his death from the building where he started his first company. Assignment as a detective first class and a new hire with the Seattle Police Department. You have been assigned either alone or with your team to work on the killer startup case. An investigation into the death of business entrepreneur Dan Killian. Mr. Killian co-owner with his brother Lonnie of the startup company uh, of the startup company, company Whirly Binds uh, jumped, fell or was assisted in a fall to his death from the rooftop area balcony just above and just above the offices his company occupied on the top floor the company was involved in the design manufacture and sales of miniature wind turbines devised to be housed on the roofs of private residences. It is ironic that the last thing Dan Killian would have felt before hitting the balcony landing of a lower section of the building would have been the wind blowing across his face. Mm. Your investigation might require using some online tools and other sources in the search of the solution to the crime. Instructions. The Seattle Police Department has determined that there is enough evidence to suggest foul play and hence to necessitate opening a murder investigation. You will have access to the entire case file, which includes police officer accounts, suspect background information and statements and statements a witness statement and a medical examiner report fbi information maps photos diagrams physical evidence pertinent documents and the like hmm. Mispl misplaced files uh misplaced files folder contains uh 
hints to the solve to the solving of the mystery and is available online at this link. Do not look into the misplaced files online unless you are stuck. Oh. The misplaced files. I was literally about to. Use. I was literally about to go to the site. <laughs> <laughs> the the misplaced files will give you hints on how to proceed. As you investigate the case, use the suspect's evaluation form included with this material. Here you will document all suspects in the in this crime with regard to their means, motive, and opportunity. If you can determine who had all three you have an excellent chance at, of solving the case. And there is a second page, but I'm going to s scan real quick. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Hold up, there we go. Okay, now that now that it's working, it shouldn't take too long though. this new image it's only going to scan the uh the uh emblem It's upside down. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, right. uh, where do I find this? Uh, not there. I just gotta find where where it's at. Uh, 
Oh, come on. New folder and we're gonna name this MMPKS or Killer Startup. Sorry about this. This is the the first time in a while using my printer. Hmm. Yeah, it's fun. At the thirty-hour mark, only eighteen hours left. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so now I can send it to you. Oh, that's right. I forgot. I got hacked like almost six months ago. So I hadn't I had you as a friend for a while. Oh, really? Yeah. There you go. Nice. Oh, I didn't even notice you were live on Twitch. Holy shit. Wait. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So that's the first document. Uh, hold on, let me hide the screen real quick. Uh, what the fuck is that? There it is. Okay. Um. Yeah, so the, on the back of the document, closing the closing the case. Once you have uh, gathered and reviewed all the evidence. You need to determine who murdered Dan Killian, along with how, when, where, and why. Oh, wait, it is upside down. Holy shit, wait. Yeah. <laughs> okay, there we, Once, there we go. Yeah. Once you alone or you and your uh, fellow detectives have reached a decision, go to crime lab, go to the crime lab to enter your accusation. The crime lab is online at this link. Some uh, detective, some detective teams are naturally competitive and pursue different theories on the means, motive, and opportunity, thereby leading to different suspects. If you find yourself in a competitive team, then detectives will need to write their solutions separately on a piece of paper. Successful detectives might consider joining together to form their own startup company. Good luck. And then, of course, this is the uh, checklist to uh, that shows what you're what you should have in the uh, case file, which I already checked. Uh, wait, hold on. Uh, okay, yeah. Next, I'm going to send you a postcard. All right. And since this is a postcard, it will be much quicker. postcard is our first piece of evidence a postcard which yeah, so, let me... yeah, 
That's the gum wall. It's a postcard of the gum wall. Still very it's much upside, upside down. down. Yeah. Yeah. It's also cut. Like yeah. Yeah, because it's gonna cut text because I'm scanning it as a photo. Uh. But this part, I'll scan it as a document. Okay. Uh, this one I can just put like on the screen. Uh, well, I have to rotate it, but it's fine. Yeah. Uh, at least now I can somewhat read that. Um, yeah. I'll cover the timer. You can see it anyway from through the uh, what's it called? Thingy thing. capture uh this and this cool this one's gonna be sideways <laughs> because um it's uh in landscape mode uh sir so. Oh yeah, and uh, I should probably send you the photos of our suspects, huh? Oh yeah. That'd probably help. A little bit. Oh yeah, here's um the uh, suspect evaluation form. They are in, uh, on, on the webcam, they are, they all have their own, uh, photo.
plus six of our suspects. And then we got three more suspect clips. So these ones are the ones that are the most sus or the least. I'm just uh, uh, sending them to you, but Dan Keller on the bottom, that's going to be on the uh, bottom left, is our mm. victim. Oh, okay. But uh, since this. He fell from a high place. Um, it's always safe to. Uh, it's always just safe to first tackle the possibility of suicide. Hmm. Yeah. So let's see here. Well, hey, at least he stayed true to his name. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Justice, how you doing? We're gonna be solving a murder mystery today. Okay, so now we're gonna do another scan. Don't show this message again, please. There we go. Doing well, that's good to hear. Yeah, we got nine suspects. One of them is just an old lady. <laughs> yeah. I have no idea how she's related to the case, but uh, I guess she is. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Uh, I can just imagine, like, she was baking cookies for her grandchildren, and then the police is like, Mmm, that sounds suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> now, so, here's the thing. I live in Seattle or I live in the Seattle area. And so I want to send you the map of where, so this map shows you, gives you a geographical understanding of the situation. And it's also going to be sideways because, of course, it is. <laughs> Just like every other, <laughs> every other yeah. image. I send you the map um, I'm gonna share you my screen because it, you'll understand why it's you're, you'll understand my frustration with this little uh, thing Please don't tell me that my damn stream is lagging. 
I swear to God, I will murder someone if it is. I will literally be the killer of this case if this if my stream is lagging. Oh. No, you you lagged for a little bit, but you're you're fine now. Oh, okay. Just maybe a slight delay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Alright. Alright, so I want you to look at this map here. And uh, then... Uh, wait, hold so, on. I haven't downloaded it yet. Uh, yeah. There we go. It's, of course, sideways, so... There you go. Yeah. So... You see where it says... Orly Bynes office building. Uh, hold on. I, I first gotta. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh. Uh. The, where does it say that? It will be. Um. Near the water. It's uh, above Yesler Way. Right over here. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I see, I see. Yeah. yeah. So now this is where I will share you my screen. Uh, after I hold on, after I bring it to Google Maps. And uh, my stream can look at it too. Uh, we're going to uh, switch over to the live scene. There we go. So yeah, see, uh, see where uh, the Smith uh, Smith Tower right here on my screen. Uh. One day. <laughs> One day I will. So the, the Smith Tower. The, the Smith Tower is on my screen. The center, right there. The center. Uh. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So. I want. I'm gonna zoom this out a bit. Hmm. Look familiar. Uh, oh wait, I was watching the wrong thing. I'm stupid. I was what I was watching like your uh, recording, not the stream. Oh. <gasps> the... oh. Okay, yeah, I see the Smith Tower. Uh, yeah. and now, does this map look familiar now? Uh, let me pull up my own, uh, my own, uh, thing. Yep, it does. Yeah. It does look so a little... It, the, what bothers me is they decided to, rep uh, they decided to replace a, for this case, for the purpose of this case, they decided to replace a historical landmark for this case. <laughs> oh, wow. A historical Wait, landmark does not exist in this world, apparently. <laughs> But like, um, yeah, because like down, down, down here is a uh, lumen field where the Seahawks play. But yeah. But yeah, um, and now I'm going to go into, no, I don't want directions. I want, I want the street view.
This is just gonna get me copyrighted. <laughs> I already got my my last stream copyrighted. Just blocked. Oh, no, what did you do? <laughs> yeah. What did you do that for, man? I uh, oh. I I played some like some band songs, some like rock. Uh, yeah. Now, so funny, funny enough, I used to walk this intersection every day. Oh shit. Yeah, I used to walk this, uh, this intersection every day because um, uh, I would either go um, up through through that way to the convention center to work at the convention center or that way to work at the stadium. But yeah, so this is the tower in question. Mm. So the story is he fell off the roof. The top, the top floor, and fell onto this roof. Oh. It does look tall enough to die from, so... It's 12 stories, so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or a little over 12, 20, uh, 12 stories. Um, the next I'm going to... I know we got the medical, we got the medical examiner document but i want to share you some crime photos i have looked through the evidence before but i basically when i opened this up i was dead tired uh, and i was like no one wants to join and no one wanted to join me in the in the case so i was like okay <laughs> i'll do this at a later date <laughs> <laughs> yeah and now we got two dead tired individuals oh yes. yeah yeah <laughs> but that's content. Exactly. So, um... This may get you age-restricted, but... Oh, that's fine. I am already not monetized. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I'll get myself age-restricted, so, like... Because I'm going to send you a picture of a dead body. Oh, okay. It's, it's not a... But now it's not a real dead body, it's a staged to dead body. Yeah, yeah. YouTube behave, alright? Yeah. I wanna YouTube know the difference. Same same same, same thing here, Twitch, know the difference. It's yeah. A, it's a staged dead body. Yeah. Don't want anyone taking things out of context. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't worry. We're not Logan Pauling our way out of this. Uh, where did the other three crime scene photos go? Or other two crime scene photos go? That's a magazine pamphlet. Uh... Right, I'm gonna look for all the photos before I send you the first one. So that way I can send each of you send each of them to you one at a time. Oh, I think I found them. Oh, I forgot one suspect photo. So... 
fuck's sake. I really hope you don't hear that. <laughs> I I can't hear anything because uh, I got music blaring. Uh, okay. <laughs> and I got a fan running in the background, so. Hmm. Meanwhile, I'm pretty sure for fuck's sake. Some. Okay, hold on. Give me a second. Yeah. Oh wait, hold on, what's this? So, oh. I will tell you the name that we cut off. It is, um, Helmut Gunther. That's our other suspect that I forgot. I see. So now... First is the fun one. The dead body. Uh, when it's done scanning. Yeah, these these photos are kind of grabby. <laughs> Yeah. Trigger warning to chat, I guess. Yeah. Alright. And hmm. then... So this one, I'm going to rotate. This is the um, helicopter view of the building. Mm. It's actually... So he didn't fall from the the tower point. He fell from the uh, observation deck onto the lower brick roof. So I guess from here. Okay. Hmm. Admittedly, I should. Got three more, three more photos. This is. So he fell from here, all the way to here, basically. Yep. Next one is gonna be a shoe. A shoe. Um, yeah. A 
shoe. What is this? An attack on me that I have no feet? Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, are you bragging, huh? Is that is that how it is? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wait, that's... Is that the same shoe that he's wearing? No. Is that the same shoe that he's wearing, like, in the in the stage, like, that body one? Yes. Huh. It doesn't look like it. It looks like a different color. Because, like, the one in that one looks a bit more orange. Well, but we could be the lighting. Socks. We gotta look at those socks, though. Hmm. I mean, the socks look... I mean, the socks just look like they're, like, hit by sunlight, while, like, the shoe just looks like it's just something else entirely. I don't know. I don't know. To be fair, that's also coming from the same guy who's green, cold, red. So I mean, like, yeah, <laughs> so, um, so um, so this photo, I'm gonna tell you right now, rules out the suicide. Ah, uh. it straight up rules out the suicide, and I'll explain it in a bit. Let me scan. Because um, I, I need to send you both that photo and the, the other photo in order for it to make sense. Hmm. Uh, so, rotate that, and then... So it's going to be a hand wound. victim's last view. See what what my um, printer does is that it uh, it it does two scans. The first scan is to uh, um, scan how scan the size, and then once it's determined the size, it'll do the, the second scan to copy the image. Hmm. There's like a blood stain right there. Yeah. So I'll tell you why this, why these two photos, these last two photos I sent you, rules out suicide. Mm. First of all, the wounds on the hand, which I will also, oh yeah. So the wo the wounds on the hand indicate that he was um holding onto a horizontal a a bar and it kind of and it scarred vertically it's it was scarred vertically like this way yeah it, because if you could see the um if if you can see the uh scars right here the uh blisters are pointing are pointing up and down. Hmm. Same with this one. And then same with the scratches here. They're all going up and down. 
this indicates that he was holding on to the uh, bar and it did this motion. Like he was holding on for dear life and it did this motion. Hmm. So, which means, and if th that does not, that is not the behavior of a suicidal man. Yeah. So he was, some, someone forced him off. Um, let's see here. And uh, one problem I will say about the, uh, about the um, observation deck photo is I've been on that tower and the view is not like this. This is photoshopped. Uh -huh. Yeah. No, the, the space needle is not that close to the, uh, the, the space needle is not that close to the tower. It's still a, a few blocks away and some towers are in between it. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. I'm like, I'm like, it on, did seem a bit unnatural, and I've never even seen this before, so it's like. Yeah. I was like, come on, guys. <laughs> yeah. They, they, but again, it's Seattle, so they had to get a photo of the space needle, so. Hmm. <laughs> Alright. But, um. The um the medical report the egg medical examination report even says so even says the same thing that I mentioned uh, the uh, about the uh, hand which I will send you and this one will be right side up. <laughs> don't have to go through the crazy flippy flipper room Yeah. The uh, document, yeah. So, oh, by the way, um, another thing I learned, because I did another one of these um, two weeks ago, Dr. Han Rodriguez is just the, it, it's not a real name, it is just the doctor name that they, that the comp, that Murder Mystery Party uses whenever there's a medical report. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so... I'd be shocked if any of the names of anyone is their actual name. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, so, patient name, Dan Killian. Date of birth, November 2nd, 1987. Notes, September 7th, 2022. The victim fell 12 stories from a rooftop onto a lower rooftop that connected two buildings. Police investigators determined he hit the cement roof at one... He hit the cement roof at uh, 1 p.m. EMTs arrived on the scene at 1.12 p.m. and pronounced him dead at 1.13 p.m. The cause of death was a broken neck. A result of a, a result of the fall. Death was most likely instantaneous. Broken bones of the uh, broken bones of the arms, shoulders, legs, as well as uh, as well as organ damage, 
were also attributed to the fall. All of these conditions are described in full in the official ME report, which we do not have. Mm. There are no signs of any visible external wounds to the body that would uh, have occurred before the victim made contact with the roof, except for those on the palms and fingers of both hands. Abrasions. Uh, abrasions, contusions, and lacerations, uh, lacerations there too, uh, with the uh, embedded uh, there too with embedded metal uh, filings suggests that the victim was grasping with great might onto a rusty metal bar before his fall. Rotation of the bar in his hands left uh, strations from the uh, from the fingertips to the wrists, rather than laterally from thumb to the little finger, aka pinky. Uh, fissions uh, from thumb to to little finger would have indicated that the hand slid along the length of the bar, which was not the case here. So that right there just confirms that it is not suicide. Yeah. Because if it was vertical, then he, that means that he was basically letting himself down and then falling and then letting go. Mm. Yeah. Because if 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 he was um because if um I don't know about you, but if I were to jump off that building, I would have been holding the bars vertically because of my height. Because those bars, that that um guardrail is pretty tall. And yes, those and and yes, that it is pretty rusty. <laughs> uh -huh. um, yeah. So other than that, what do I want to look at next? We got um, employee ID cards. We got um, a police department. Um, a police department blog. We got elevator, where we got emails and a transcript. We got newspaper and a letter. diary Which, uh, yeah, so which, um, excuse me, <clears throat> uh, what, what piece of evidence would you like to look through next? Um, anything really. Okay. I guess the, the ID cards maybe. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. I don't know if it's something I need to scan with my phone or anything. I haven't yet. Oh, let me just find it. No, that's from the last case. So that was... <sighs> I 
get these um I get these things at a discount at my board game shop. <laughs> this is like um uh originally this is like thirty dollars. Uh, 30 30 us dollars oh my god and but um i, I get a 15 percent discount so i only have to pay like 25 <laughs> jesus christ yeah So this is the um uh I'm holding it now. This is the ID card. And this is it's the card of our victim. Hmm. By a convincing ID. <laughs> it's a it's a key card. Hmm. As well. Because you can see them. Yeah. The, uh... Yeah. But there's also the um Code number if it can yeah one two one zero one one and it's written on that list as well yeah. yeah and then but here's also the list of employees with their ID numbers or their badge numbers um, which I will you uh, this is a document yes Exit this now, and then send. Now I think um I think these well the IG numbers are going to be important I'm pretty sure but I think signature will be important to determine their handwriting. Hmm yeah. But um the next piece of evidence that's related to um the ID numbers, um, I believe, is an elevator log. Because in order for you to use the elevator, you have to have the ID card. Let's see. Um, No, don't knock over my Yu-Gi-Oh cards. <laughs> those cards. I like those cards in particular. <laughs> you can Stop. You can cut all the evidence you want, but do not chop the Yu-Gi-Oh cards. No. 
know they I actually threw these yesterday. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> Exit. This is only one page. Now, what's really funny oh. is that, um, the building code that's listed on the top it's the actual building code oh wow <laughs> yeah <laughs> i looked it up <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> it's the actual building code for this for the tower um yeah so basically uh, and this is also a military time mm. so um we got, we got to keep in mind that um, the Emmy report uh, stated that the time of death was uh, let's see here. We gotta keep in mind that the time of death was at around one o'clock. So at thirteen, so at so at thirteen hundred hours, the thirteen hundred hours is the key time. Which will be at the bottom. Um. And also, the floor is indicated on on this side. G standing for uh, ground, B is for basement, and P penthouse. And he was, uh, he fell from the penthouse. really um, interesting is that we see uh, we see one, two, three, four. Um, yeah, we see we see one, two, three, four people 
or four times that the elevator was used from the uh, from the penthouse. Um. First time was at eleven forty nine, and that was used by two, one, two, one, four, nine, five. That is uh, Melody David. Which is this lady right here. The second person that used it was. which is Pat Morales. Which is this lady. Uh, third time was by one two, which was L Lonnie Killian. Which is our victim's brother. And the last time we see it used is at 104 by by you, but I think we could probably narrow our suspect pool town down to th those four. Because they were the last ones to see him alive. Or potentially the last ones to see him alive. I'm going to write that down. Oh, you got a phone call? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, hold on. Yep. Let's see, uh, Magallion, thank you for the hydrate. Yes, go hydrate. Welcome. Welcome, Mag. Uh, while I'm waiting for him to come back, I will grab some tea.
Sorry, my grandma called. <laughs> sharing my camera to my audience um, so let me fix that Suspect evaluation form. Because I think we've just narrowed, we, we've just narrowed down our suspect pool to four people. First suspect. First suspect is going to be German. Our first suspect is Sherman Holmes. Second suspect would be Lonnie Killian. Lonnie, which is Dan's brother. Oh. 
Now we just need to establish. Their motive, their means, their opportunity, and if they got it, what their alibi is. start with alibis that way we could probably narrow it down faster because <laughs> if, if uh testimony if, if we see some testimonies matching then it could uh narrow it down further This is a transcript of a police interview. Um, and it is a suspect interview with uh, Francesca Farber. Yeah. Um, Francesca Farber is... Keep in mind that these guys are still suspects. It's just that um, they're not very likely suspects now. But um, Francesca Farber is this lady. And uh, instead of sending this one over to you, I can just read it since this is an interview. Or the we got we got a bunch of transcripts actually. We got let's see. We got Yeah, we got one, two, three, four. Seven, eight interviews to go through. But if you want, I can. What I can do is I can uh, send you half, and you could read. I could read one half. You could read the other half aloud. Yeah, sure. Don't know how good I'll be at reading uh, in this condition, but all right. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> Maybe it's funnier, who knows? Yeah, <laughs> it'll be funnier, trust me. Okay. Meanwhile, you can stare at my mood plushie. Oh my god, so cute. Cute little ghost. Of course, I would have a ghost as a plushie because I'm the exorcist. <laughs> All right. And each interview is two pages. Um, yeah, so I want to just scan for all four of these real quick. Um, 
on my head. Fuck. You alright? Yes. Water. <laughs> <laughs> no, I get migraines real Don't... easy. Yeah. Yeah. Don't drink too much caffeine because that could be part of it. Too late. <laughs> <laughs> too late. <laughs> Not only did I drink too much caffeine, but also too much beer. Uh, yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> but now that you mention it, alcohol does sound good right now. Yeah, if a matter of fact, I'm actually gonna just crack a bottle open right now. I don't have beer, but I got whiskey, so I wanna... You do that, I'm just gonna open a bottle for me. <laughs> Oh my god. Sorry, that I just was realized me, something. Uh, oh, hold on. Fuck. Okay, well, maybe. Fuck's sake. Um. Ugh. So uh, yesterday I got like a pack of like a pack of eleven coronas, and like I'm already at like, I think like I think it was like five, because I'm at I'm at my sixth bottle. <laughs> like, oh like hold on, hold on. Wait, I like how <laughs> this is this is hilarious because you're literally sending me like pictures of like a crime scene, and I'm just like. I'm about to send you like a picture of like just how many bottle ups of beer I've drunk. <laughs> yeah, hold on. Uh, those are the ones I had from from yesterday to today. The FBI is gonna look at this discussion and be like, "Wait, guys, guys, we we we're seeing a crime scene. Oh wait, what the fuck is this?" <laughs> <laughs> We're seeing your crimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like we're seeing a crime scene. <laughs> and then just like, it's like just five bottles of, five empty bottles of beer. It's like, wow, I've never seen anything more horrifying in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I have a really good time looking at this uh, scene here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. oh, there you uh, go, chat. <laughs> Something tells me I'm not going to be feeling good tomorrow. Oh, uh, you're going to be so hungover, man. Oh, uh, like, not, not even, not even that. Nah. It's like, I'm straight up just going Holy to be, shit. like, unhealthy. <laughs> I'm look, I'm at the this is the true crime scene right here. Yeah. <laughs> no, I gotta... show you. Yeah, feel free to show it to your, <laughs> to your chat. Oh, no, they see it, they see it. Nice. Oh shit, I just downloaded the same thing twice. Oops. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm gonna show you, um, what I got for the break. Um, here, I just gotta take a photo of it because it's too big to put on my, uh, my desk underneath the camera. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Yeah, this is a two-year-old bottle. <laughs> oh boy. It's the good stuff, man. You don't want to go through it too quickly. Oh. Yeah. It's the hard stuff. Yeah. And 
pasty stuff. This yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. With two year old bottle, I had like a, a something else in mind entirely. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, yeah, this two-year-old bottle, I can, I can definitely see this being a two-year-old bottle, pretty good. Anyway. You just imagine drunken detective work. Oh my god, that looks beautiful. I can basically taste it from here. Hold on, let me lick the screen. <laughs> I'm not looking to drink it. But man, that honey though. Mm -hmm. The honey though. That that's uh that's what that's what really I don't know. I'm I am i kind of just grew indifferent to the taste of alcohol. Yeah. Cause now I just use it to not like to not to not commit the to not commit the 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 other to, uh, to what well, what was the guy's name again? Uh, hold on, hold on. Wait, to not com the fuck was it? Was it was it, to not commit the killian? Oh yeah. Yeah, to not commit the killian, you know. Yeah. Oh, have a good night, Rhombus. I didn't even know you were here still. Essential. That's a real thing. It's a the gum wall is a real thing. Hmm. Of course, um, it's been cleaned off so that way we could start over. But yeah, it, the gum wall is real. It's in Pike Place Market. Keep you on the laptop. Thank you, Rumbus. Love. Good night. Be safe. You too, Rumbus. Have a good night. Anyway, sorry to say, saying good night to chat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> most of my, ch I feel like most of my chat is like American, and they're like, and they're like five hours behind me, where they're like it's like four a.m. probably. Oh, well, it's one thirty a.m. over here. Yeah, I feel like my chat ranges from like, Tomorrow. from like five hours behind me to like eight hours behind me. It's 1.38 a.m. I knew it. It is eight hours behind me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, cause remember I'm on the west coast. 
Yeah. Okay, I'm starting to regret taking that what shot the already. What the fuck? <laughs> I'm starting to regret taking that shot already, because now it's just made me more drowsy. <laughs> well, you see, here's the trick. You can't get drowsy if you already are. That's true. <sighs> I like that logic. Exactly. Can't say that we're supposed to be policemen. <laughs> we're bad role models for kids. Who said I wanted to be a role model? No, I'm <laughs> Neither do I. I'm like <laughs> I'm like I'm like the worst possible role model you could ever follow. <laughs> Oh, I'm not. <laughs> uh, I'm very much not. Nice playlist. <laughs> the ones I sent you. Did my light just flicker? It might have. I think I've, are... I've downloaded more documents today than I have in my entire life. <laughs> and that includes my class's documents. That's sad. <laughs> yeah, the best. <laughs> That's because they don't teach me anything. <laughs> oh yeah, that's 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 even better. Exactly. Alright, so So uh, the one I'm gonna read right now it is um an interview of Sherman Holmes. Sherman Holmes, that sounds <laughs> yeah. This guy. Yeah, it it took it, it it took me a while to 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 link the name with a certain Holmes. Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> Our prime suspect is actually a detective. Who would have guessed? <laughs> So in the um, inter interviewee sheets, or it, their data is in the uh, transcripts as well. Which can which could be helpful. Um, but yeah. So. Yeah. So, yeah, this is between this interview is between Officer Leonard Sepperstein and Sherman Holmes. Uh, I understand your association with the Killians go goes back before the the Worley Vines business. Yes, I have been a personal accountant for, for both of them prior to this, mostly doing tax stuff. Did they give you an offer to buy into this new business? No, they knew I didn't have the money for that. I make enough to live okay, but not enough to invest in something like, like this. And yet you handle millions of dollars, and, and yet you handle millions of, of dollars of other people's money. Does that bother you? It's normal. That's just the way the accounting business is. And if you were, and if you were Dan and Lonnie's personal accountant, what more did you get from being the accountant for the, the business? I get a I get a bonus of a few thousand if the business does well. And as part of my contract, it is stipulated that I get money through Dan and Lonnie's personal businesses, since I handle the accounts for both of them when they get involved in other ventures. What sort of ventures? Oh, odd things. Lonnie invested in an online uh, betting business and Dan became a part owner of a Swedish uh, massage parlor, for example. I handle the investments, payouts, taxes, and so on. Just small stuff. I'm sure there's not enough I'm sure there's not enough work for you to come in to the office every day so how often are you there and what do you do all day I come in a few times a week check the books talk to people get a sense of the direction of the company people feel more confident and more cautious as they see the money manager hanging around my home is surrounded by other buildings and here I've got an office with a view, which I only have to share with two people who are usually s somewhere else. Share with whom? Helmut Gunther, who runs the business in the basement, and Pat Morales, their lawyer. Did you see them on Tuesday? Yeah, Pat was there, and I know Helmut was, and I know Helmut was in the basement. And as the company accountants, you know how much everyone, or you know how much everybody makes, whether they've bought into the company or are on salary, like yourself. And uh, Sherman nods. You so you were in the office, so you were in the office Tuesday morning. Yes. Didn't I just say that when? I said I saw Pat, but I left early before Dan, before Dan was killed. Such a pity that. Did you happen to talk to Dan that day? Nope. Didn't even see him. Oh, there's a lie right there. Do you benefit from his death? I get a little money according to his will, but his death is a great loss to me. So... 
flat out lied in the, in the interview. Yeah. But he does have a motive. He did reveal a motive in, in that uh, interview. Mm. Um, he revealed that he is in his will. He's in, uh, he's in Dan's will. Uh, um. You get a little, yeah, he gets money according to his will. Francesca Farber. Why not? Alright. So I think it's yeah, it's her. Yep. It's I'll just have it here. And it's yeah, so this lady right here. Yep. Oh boy, can't wait to uh, can't wait to butcher this whole interview. <laughs> <laughs> We're very sorry for your loss, Mrs. Farber, and hate to have to put you through this through this at this time. Starting off amazing, but I'm sure you'll want to help us find the person responsible for your husband's murder. And you're absolutely sure it was a murder? Yes, ma'am. Evidence on the roof showed that your husband did not climb over the barrier, but was tossed over it. Who would want to do that? I don't understand. We're trying to find that out. Mrs. Okay, hold on. Let me put this in full screen. It might be easier to see. Let's do that. Okay. Uh, who wants to do that? I don't understand. We're trying to find that out, Mrs. Farber. Exactly where were you between say 12 p.m and 1 p.m i ask in case you saw anybody wandering around at that time i was in my office a little after 12 p.m i went to the lunchroom to fix it to fix a sandwich and lonnie was there making a lunch as well you folks normally don't go out for lunch no just sometimes it's easier to eat here and that Brings in a nice spread every day, saves time, and we don't have to deal with the with that interminably slow elevator. Why so slow? And that is um this person right here. Oh, hold on. Uh, I put in full screen because you couldn't. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Yeah, I put in full screen. Like, yeah. So I could read it better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dan Erlani had it converted from an old freight elevator so that we could have a private elevator up to the offices and down to the basement. Yes, it's kind of nice that we don't have to share it, share it with all the people who live or work in this building. Yes, I notice it's a real mix of residential apartments and offices. Uh, I hate to bring this up, but I understand you were married before. And your first husband's death was also a murder. I don't want to talk about it. It was horrible. And they never found out who did it. Or why he was even where he was. And when he was there. And in a stolen car. It makes no sense. But I know why you bring it up. Oh my god, I cannot read. But I know why you bring it up. I was not charged with anything. And it has nothing to do with Dan's death, so let's move on. 
Why did you keep your relationship and your marriage to Dan a secret? We didn't want to mix our private life with our business life. I wanted to be treated as an equal among the staff. An employee did not just boss the wife. Did wait. An employee, not just the boss's wife. Okay. Uh we were going to tell everyone eventually. Hold some sort of a mock ceremony and party. A celebration of our marriage. With Dan gone, you still keep Oh my god, my head. With Dan gone, you still keep your financial investments in the business. Uh in the business, but you also inherit a great deal of money. What are you saying? That's it. This interview is over. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's that's the interview. Yep. 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 God damn it! Why is my life split here? <laughs> Let's see here. Um... Oh shit! Wait, no, go back. There we go. Just keep my life split there. That's fine. Now the uh, I'm not sure about. I'm pretty sure when they talked about like their first her first husband it's something like history so i think dan might be her second husband then if they mentioned yeah her first husband yeah, i think we can touch on that later yeah um, i assume so yeah so right now i'm gonna read the next one uh this is uh, interview between Le Leonard, Officer Leonard, and Helmet, Helmet Gunther. Which is... Where did he go? I had him. I had him in my pile. Where did he go? Where did he come from? Where did he go? Where did he come from? Button I jump. Oh. Here we go. Yeah, this guy. Hmm. That dude. The dude that looks like the most stereotypical jailbreaker <laughs> in like any in any like movie ever. Okay, here we go. Here's something. Here's some juicy stuff. Ooh. Why am I the first to be? Why am I the first one? To, or why am I the first one to be interviewed? Because I have a criminal record. Isn't that profiling? That was a long time ago. I was a kid then, and it was my family that pushed me into into crime. I haven't been in trouble since then. So if you think I had anything to do with Dan's murder, you're wrong. No one's accusing you of anything, Mr. Gunther. I just want to ask you a few questions. Where were you on the morning Mr. Killian was killed? I was in the basement. So that, that checks out. Um, I was in the basement. I have I have a whole crew down there that can eat, that can testify to that. Yes, I have a small shared. Or, let's see. But you did go up to the penthouse offices around lunchtime, is that right? Yes, I have I have a small shared office upstairs as well. I didn't even see Dan. Who do you share your office with? Pat Morales. She doesn't uh, come in every day. And uh, Sherman, he comes and goes at odd times. Pat and he have a, a couple of filing cabinets in there. Was Pat or Sherman there then? No. And what time was that? I don't know. After lunchtime... Uh, after lunch sometime I knew uh, when I knew when I clock in in the morning and when I leave in the afternoon but I don't keep track of every minute 
you are seen and heard arguing with Mr. Killian on numerous occasions. What was what was that all about? Ow. I don't know. I don't remember. Depends which occasions. He demands everything be finished right away, but it takes time to do things, and he doesn't always figure that. He doesn't always figure that in. And you've argued about. And if you, uh, and you've argued about money. Well, yeah. Almost all the people who work upstairs get a cut of the business, but I just get a salary, and not a great one at that. And I work twice as hard as some of them. I had no money to buy into the, to the startup, but Lonnie offered me a job at an hourly rate, at an hourly wage. They knew I, I, they knew I didn't have much money because I was unemployed for so long because of this COVID thing, and I think they figured that an hourly wage meant I would work more than the usual number of hours because I needed the money. That was one thing he was right about. How did the Killian brothers find you for this job? I did some work for them in the past. You know, piecemeal. I can I can build up I can build anything. Mechanical, electrical. All around handyman. All I want is to get paid what I'm worth. But now that Killian's gone, you still get to continue the work with his brother Lonnie. Plus you get some money from Dan's will. That is that was in the contract. That was something to protect me if something happened to the business. It's certainly not anything I could retire on. Well, that both gives him, but yet at the same time eliminates his motive. Yeah. <laughs> As far as money goes, because... Yeah, from what I can tell, this guy seems like the most legit, but because he's also, like, a criminal, like, he had, like, past criminal records, like, uh, he may also be, like, the most natural liar. So, like, anything... Yeah, so, like, any lie he says, like, could just sound legit, but it's just completely not true. Yeah. Yeah, but he did... But he did, um... <sighs> He did say that he was in the uh, penthouse offices um, during the uh, during the day. So, mm. which um, if we look back at the uh, the, the uh, elevator schedule. Or elevator timestamps. Up there. Where is it? Oh, timestamps. Uh, where are those? Do I even have those? Yeah, I sent you them. Oh, okay. There we go. Oh. It's labeled under a lotus. Yeah. Yeah, found. actually used the elevator a lot throughout the day look at him <laughs> his, his, his uh um badge number ends in 300 hmm. his, used it uh on the ground floor at 745 he used again the basement at 821 so almost in an hour an hour later hmm. Another hour later, 
he uses it again from the ground floor. So a tough screen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Almost, almost another hour later, he, he uh, uses it again from the ground floor. Yeah. And then uh, two hours later, he uses it again in, from a basement. And uh, he, according to his testimony, that was um, him going to lunch. Mm. So he was going to the penthouse. Yeah, I, I guess he, he, he does seem like the one with less, uh, with less against him. Um, I am going to add him to the sheet, just in case. Yeah. He, did, he is now, he now has the, um, he now has the means for it. Yeah. I guess if he did have a motive, it would have been, um, I guess, criminal record. Criminal record is a motive? <laughs> yeah, because it could be pro, because it could fit a profile. Uh -huh. Criminal record, um, Underpaid. Yeah. And, um, and he also had an argument. opportunity well we don't really know so yeah but he did not see he also did not see um sherman or pat so anyways you're up next <laughs> yeah uh, all right. Who do I do? Um. Uh, Lonnie. Sure. All right. So, give me a second. Put on a dumb tea. Lonnie, the uh, brother. Well, hey, if if it does end up being him, I guess you could say that both of them lived up to their name. One of them did the Killian, the other one got the Killian. <laughs> uh, let me put it in full screen so I can read it better. Yep. Wait, uh... We're sorry for your loss, Mr. Killian. 
The only reason we need to question you at, at this unfortunate time is in case you can provide us with some information that might help in the apprehension of the person responsible for the death of your brother. I understand. I'll do whatever I can to help. Do you know what your brother was doing on the roof? He went up there He went up there almost every day, sometime between 12 p.m. and 1 p.m. Usually he brings his lunch, just a sandwich or something. He likes... I mean, liked the fresh hair. Uh, when it was cold and enjoyed looking out over the rest of Seattle. Did that? Uh, did anybody else go up on the roof with him? Not with him per se, but everybody went on the roof from time to time, except Charles. He has acrophobia, I think. Uh, wait, he has acrophobia. Uh, I think with such busy stuff going on in the office at, at all, uh, in the office all the time, Dan enjoyed some time alone. And all our working models were on the roof for testing purposes. So Helmut and I and Annette were up there a lot. And Francesca? So, um, Not so much. Uh, now real quick, uh, let's that. see, acrophobia is the uh, fear of heights, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Um. Uh, mental health condition which individual experience intense fear of heights. Yes, it is. Yeah. Extreme or irrational fear of heights. Yep. Okay. So, I guess that one needs Charles. Yeah. <laughs> old man this guy so yeah he is officially not a suspect <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay did you date her go before ahead. she married dan uh oh were you saying something uh, go ahead okay did you date her before she married dan <laughs> how did you know that i didn't but i do i didn't but i do now just a thought that occurred to me. I was going to ask a simple question, but then I figured it might work better as a statement instead. I brought Francesca into... Uh... Whirlybean... I don't even know what the fuck that is. Uh... I think it's Whirlybeans, because they're making, uh... Um, turbines. Oh, Whirlybeans, okay. Yeah. Brought Francesca into Whirlybeans. Uh, we went out a few times socially. Then she met Dan and bang. Since he and I look alike, I guess there's something he has that I don't. Personality wise, or it was his socks. Did you see uh did you see her Tuesday morning? Um, I don't think so. Getting back to Dan, I heard that you and he argued a lot. Not really. We disagreed on some things, like design and expenses and advertising. That sounds like a lot. Uh, and then there was that large argument last week that I learned about when we were talking to people informally right after the murder. Who said that? That's not important. What is is what you were go is what you were arguing about. Artistic differences. Uh, I wanted a more efficient in case Whirlabine, but Dan went ahead and went ahead with his whimsical roof ornaments like the eagle and the plane pro and the plane propeller and the woman with the blowing umbrella that's all just a discussion about design i may get a little loud and vocal but that doesn't make it an argument where were you tuesday late morning i'm always in my office when i'm not on the roof i mean I wasn't on the roof, so I wouldn't have been on my, I wouldn't have been in my office. I sometimes go down to the basement, but I don't think I did I did that on Tuesday. I was in my office. And that's where it ends. Uh, he was fucking lying. I swear I saw his number a few times. <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, because his number ends with one two instead of one one. Um, yeah. <sighs> okay. First time we see him, uh, so he entered the building at eight oh six, and then he left the penthouse floor at twelve forty-five, and then went back up uh, five minutes later. Mm. So, um, Lonnie just made it on the suspect list. Yeah. say his motive is narcissism <laughs> i guess so yeah because he, he sounds narcissistic <laughs> a little bit you already have lonnie on there that's right <laughs> so, gonna have, so. God damn it. Finished already. <laughs> so narcissistic. And then, um... And also money. Because hmm. he's in the will. It's... He's more likely to be in the will. Hmm. And also romance. Possibly romance. Yeah. I feel like that I feel like the romance probably makes it like probably makes it like 90% like it's it's probably him. Yeah. And he uh, he definitely had the means and opportunity to do so. Yeah. Yeah, Lonnie seems like the number one suspect right now. Yeah. Uh, I'm just gonna say Sherman is his alibi. Sherman or Sherman basement. Oh, 
Charles. Where's your Charles? Unless I sent you Charles. Did I send you Charles? What did I send you? Uh. Oh, I, I sent you Charles. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was about to check. Yeah. There's Lonnie. Yeah, Charles. I did Francesca. And Melody. Okay. So I have to still have to do Charles and Melody. So then I do Charles. Alright. So then I will do. Let's do a net. Which is there. I have no idea what her role is in this business, but we're going to find out. I think. Um, oh, a secretary. So there's a red there. Anyways, yeah. First, first question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Um, okay. You are the secretary for Worldly Binds. I answer the phones, handle the outgoing mail, do the filing, handle clients, work with the accountant, oh, and, and fundraiser, but I don't get lunch for anybody. I think my exact title is office manager. <laughs> uh, I am I'm the penthouse gopher, and for all this, and for all this, I do more than, than I, I do more work than anybody and get none of the credit and less money. Okay, she is, sounds very narcissistic right there. <laughs> that is a very narcissistic thing to say. <laughs> a little bit. And very vengeful thing to say, too. Yeah. Um, so why did you take the job for Helmut? I've been Dan's private secretary before. And he knows I'm good at everything. So he wanted me uh, for the job. But I said I wouldn't take it unless he hired Helmut for a technical job. I knew they would, would need a model maker and engine, an electrical engineer. So they hired both of you? Yeah. Yes. They got maximum talent for minimum expense. Nice deal, huh? I did okay during the pandemic, but Helmut had a hard time. The place he had, uh, the place he had his main job went out of business. He mentions the fundraiser and accountant. What do you do with uh, Charles Manette and with Sherman Holmes? So Charles Manette is the fundraiser. Okay. Oh boy, that's a long. What the <laughs> fuck? Long <assist. laughs> okay. I'm glad I don't have to read that. <laughs> okay, Charles is a uh, Charles is a real jock, a youthful, sixty-two-year-old who hits up the who hits up the money. Oh, okay, that was close. <laughs> who hits up the money edge crowd on the on the ski slopes on the tennis uh, on the ski slopes on the tennis handball and volleyball courts and of course on the golf course that's where you that's where you make the connections with the real wealthy he does all those sports the only thing he he doesn't do is ride a racehorse. Though I wouldn't be surprised if he owned one. So he goes to the track when he can when he can and sucks money from that group too. I think some of the money he brings and also comes from gambling debts he collects. Mr. Money Bags Mont or Monet Bags without or, excuse me, 
Mr. Moneybags. Moneybags. Without the T. <laughs> Brings the cash in. Oh, wait. I, I think I think she's a South. I think she's a Southern girl. <laughs> Sounds like a Southern girl. <laughs> <laughs> Brings the, brings the cash in, brings the cash in it, and then does whatever <laughs> it is accountants do. He was an athlete too. <laughs> Sherman, in, in Sherman in his days, he had a promising career as a football lineman, cornerback, until he got uh, a torn ACL and a broken leg in the same game. Took him out of, uh, took him out of football forever. He told me about the ACL a few times, so I added it to my vocabulary. Sherman's a nice, ordinary man living an ordinary house, uh, living in an ordinary house and leading an ordinary life. He's not married, and he doesn't have the voice to do uh, sports announcing, sports announcing on the radio or the face. To to work on television. Uh, are, are you serious? I mean, look at that face. <laughs> Unless he's drunk. No, they're talking about Charles. Um, I don't know. I mean, to be fair, if I was... If I if I was the police guy, I would arrest her just for talking so much. Like Jesus Christ, that is way too damn long. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, look at this guy. He would do okay on TV. Yeah. A, a damn insult. <laughs> <laughs> uh, his life is uh, pretty much just numbers. Do you work with the other woman? Francesca Farber and Melody David. Francesca keeps pretty much to herself. And now I think I know why. I just found out she just married Dan. He's, uh, he's husband number two. Yep, so that confirms it. Husband number two. Mm. Melody is a pretty, f Melody is pretty friendly. Though she can have a bit of a temper if things don't go to her liking. She had quite a blow up with Dan Tuesday morning, which sounded like it had something to do with his marriage to Francesca. She was fine in the morning. She was fine in the morning. We rode up in the elevator together. Anyway, uh, Melody's work is something she does strictly on her own. She does all the graphic art and illustrations and the photography, if we need any. She did she did our brochure and flyers. Me, uh, me, I can't draw a straight line, so I appreciate her talents. Thank you for the information. My pleasure. You didn't ask me if I killed Dan, but let me assure you, it wasn't me. I don't know who did it, but I sure am curious. I can't imagine it was any one of us. Now, see, that is something that a killer would say because they love inserting themselves into the investigation. And you just inserted yourself. <laughs> Big time. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm adding you. Oh wait, no, you're already there. <laughs> Narcissist again.
Wait, do they all get money if, like, the, the dude dies? Mm, doesn't look like it. I think, um... I think they're hoping for a better deal oh. if Dan dies. Hmm. Oof. Works. And house. Uh oh. Wait a minute. She also revealed a lie from, uh, if you remember what, um, uh, Francesca said hmm. at the end of the near the end of or, or in the beginning of the interview, she mentioned that um. I'm sure. Wait no. wait no, that was Annette. Excuse me, that that was, that was Annette, not Pat. Shit. <laughs> Pat is Annette now. Or Annette is Pat now. <laughs> Might be a good thing we're not detectives, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because Francesca mentioned that she that that Annette brings food but um she, she says she says this hands her phones handle the outgoing mail do the filing handle clients work with the accountant and fundraiser but I don't get lunch for anybody hmm Ain't that a little, um... One of these things just doesn't belong here. So... Is it Francesca that lied or is it Annette that died? Fran that lied, not died. Um... I'm guessing it's Francesca that lied because... Annette... Um, well, let's see here. Well, also, you also got to pay attention to what, um, this circled. Mm. The officer felt that she was true, that, and that was 100% truthful. Hmm. I guess. So she refused um, to have the lawyer present because she has nothing to hide. Mm. She has, quote, nothing to hide. I guess. At the same time, why would Francesca lie about, like, a net, like, being like basically like a like just bringing food oh uh, i guess also, uh, right. also it's really hard to lie when you're listing off stuff yeah it's like you, you don't you don't just go if it's one thing if she goes oh and i don't do this but she she, she didn't do that she goes but i don't do this hmm. if she said oh then it would have been a lie. It would have more than likely been a lie. Yeah. I don't know. She wouldn't. She wouldn't be in my suspect list anyway. So. Yeah. Or at least not the main suspect. She 
Ghost Penthouse only. I'm starting, I'm, I'm actually now starting to think more and more that it's either Lonnie or Francesca, the wife, now. <sighs> yeah, those two are definitely like my top two. Lonnie is definitely like the main suspect for me. Francesca is definitely close second. Continue the um. Oh, well, actually, let me list Francesca's means and opportunity because she has. Because she also flat out lied. Not only did she flat out lie about that, or, or, about the food. Um, she doesn't even have an alibi. Mm. Either she has no alibi. Yeah. Um, at least not yet. Um, and means, well, she is the wife. And then opportunity, well, wife. Because... What husband wouldn't trust their wife, right? Yeah. Mm. Wife and husband. This is the this is the the picture that I'm painting right now with for the possibility of Francesca. I'm thinking that if she did do it, she she used the opportunity of her being the wife. They basically go up to the roof to just have a little mono y mono romance or romance type of romantic uh interaction and but that would be a ploy to um basically just uh kill him yeah or because she has a because she was mentioned to have a quite a temper she could have killed him out of rage Mm. And when you are in a bit of rage, there it doesn't matter what your physical ability is. When you're in a rage, anything can happen. Yeah. Or I guess there could also be the possibility that one is the accomplice of the other. Well, cause, I mean, um, that's not really how this works. Because, oh, okay. Um, Oh, okay. Um, there's only gonna be one. Oh, okay. Party. Okay, so there's only. Okay, well. Yeah. Okay, scratch that idea. Um. Yeah. It was a good thought, but yeah, that's yeah. not how this works. <laughs> yeah. If this were IRL, then maybe. <laughs> yeah. I need an adult. Oh wait. <laughs> <laughs> I am an adult. I am an adult. I need an adult to your adult. Uh, it's like, I need an adult. It's like, you are the adult. It's like, I need an adult that isn't me. <laughs> Alright. Hmm. Well, let's see here. I think, yeah, 
you're next because I went through that long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you want, I'll do both of them out like in a row. All right. Uh. Okay. Um, let's get down to the nitty gritty, shall we? Your relationship with Dan Killian went beyond the time you spent at the office, correct? You know it did. I'm pretty sure you're one of how many police who drooled over the photos. And did this relationship begin before or after you were hired? I wasn't just hired. I came across... No, I came in as an advisor. Uh, with cash and a talent that could help turn... Oh, uh, but I, I forgot to mention, this is Melody. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I wasn't just hired. I came in as an advisor with cash and a talent that could help turn this venture into something even more prof prof profitable. And I didn't know how Dan... And I didn't know Dan before. I was just brought in. I knew Charles Monnet. He talked. He talked me into investing in the company, and then he recommended me for the illustrator's job. Every good startup needs a graphic artist, uh, and I'm one of the best, and a photograph, and a photographer as well. Photographer, me and my dumbass grammar. Uh, and what was your relationship with Mr. Monnet? He is a fundraiser, and I'm a woman with funds. And if you're suggesting what I think, he's in his 60s and I'm in, and I'm 27. Mr. Money got... Okay. Hey. <laughs> That's... Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mr. Money got you the job. Okay. <laughs> God damn it. God damn it. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> uh, Mr. Monnet, got you. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I, was, I was trying to ignore that. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Do uh, Mr. Monnet, got you the job. And after you started working here, you began an, you began an intimate relationship with Dan Killian. Uh, the photos locked in his desk drawer were posed, not shot with a hidden camera. So, he was unattached, or so I thought. And not only that, he made the first move. How long had this been going on? About a month. And how long have you been working here? A little over a month. What are you suggesting? We jumped right into things. I posed, I posed for him right here in the office, which is where I kept my camera gear. And he came back to my place a few, and he came back to my place a few times. Is there a crime in that? And you never went to his house? No, it never came up. He lived further out, and I was right around the corner. Uh, we would usually meet after work, no? Uh, we would usually meet after work. No, he's he never stayed overnight. What are you getting at? Wait, I I I, I don't know if I read that correctly. You must. Yeah, you, you got it right. Yeah, <laughs> I I'm too brain dead right now. Uh, you must have been angry with him when you found out he was married. In fact, we were told there was quite a ruckus coming from his office when you and he were the only ones in it on Tuesday morning. I was furious. He was hiding his relationship with Francesca from me. Which is the same as lying. Someone in the office may have even heard me yell out, I could kill you. Which is one of many things I said to him in his office. You're not stupid. You know people say that. That doesn't mean I killed him. Why didn't you quit then and there? I thought about that. I sat in my office and wondered what I should do. I was really hurt, but I worked for Lonnie. But I worked for Lonnie too. And I was in the middle of a few projects. 
Before I could decide if I should quit, Dan was killed, and that solved the problem. Hmm. Mm, that's a big motive, but at the same time... Hmm. Uh, the ruckus was in the office. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, but that also does add a, a new motive for yeah. Francesca. Mm -hmm. So I think she might have the biggest motive. Oh yeah, yeah she yeah. yeah she might have the biggest motive. Yeah. So affair. All right. No. For Francesca, it's infidelity. Hmm. That's the only motive right now for Francesca. Um, and of course, uh, Melody would have the same uh, motive. Hmm. Yeah, that's a pretty big motive. Yeah. Especially for Francesca, which is like. Honestly, one of our, like, number one subs, like, it's definitely, like, up there for number one suspect, along with Lonnie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't recall Melody being mentioned in any testimony. Yeah. And plus, the interviewer said that she probably was, like, saying the truth. Yeah, that is true. Hmm. Um. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm gonna. Work, I'm, uh, just in case, I'm gonna do a little. Because uh, I did study profiling. And so. I'm using this opportunity to use my profiling thing with the um get the elevator schedule. Um, let's see, Melody four nine five. Um, Must have tailgated somebody because um, she's only seen uh, twice, and the first time was from the penthouse. Mm. And the second time was well, actually, hold on. He's not a suspect. She has an alibi. Oh, uh, who? No, no, Melody has an alibi. Oh, yeah. I, I probably could have guessed it. Schedule. Yeah. The elevator. She, she left. Um, or she, she, or, yeah. Wait, no. Oh, wait, never mind. That's her going back up. Yeah, she's still a suspect, but at her alibi could be that she was in her office. Yeah.
I also just realized that Lonnie also is also probably told the truth. According to yeah. the interviewer. Yeah, so. Hmm. The, and uh, if we look at Francesca. It's maybe. Same with Charles, but I don't I, like Charles is, who has acrophobia. I don't think, I I don't think it can be him. Acrophobia is a very big alibi. Yeah. In this circumstance. <laughs> yeah. Even if he did lie, I don't think it it's it's him. Yeah. That's what could trigger an episode. Yeah. So I guess I read uh, Charles' testimony. Yeah, and who is the interviewer? Because I have another Charles. Oh, the interviewer is Brian Roberts. Oh. Okay. Uh, Brian Roberts. Okay, yeah. So he's interviewed twice. Yeah, he's interviewed twice. Hmm. Okay. Um, I must say, Mr. Monnet, that of the many interviews I've concluded on this job, no one has ever come in so impeccably dressed as you. Thank you. If thank you, if that was a compliment. This is who I am. You have a reputation of being a financial wizard, well connected and a bit hard nosed. Is there a question in that? You are correct. And if I wanted, and uh, and if I wanted, I could have found a way to get out of this interview. But I have nothing to hide. I thought this might be something a little different for me. And maybe even entertaining. Well, I'm happy we can amuse you, Mr. Monnet. I wanted to ask you about your relationship with Dan Killian. You've worked with Lonnie Killian before, but not Dan. As I understand it, uh, as I understand it, and you apparently didn't like him. Off Officer Saperstein heard heard you say after the murder. It's really no loss. I only meant that his death would not hurt the company financially. He wouldn't know what to do with his money, if he made any. Mind you, he had that one good idea. I wouldn't have I wouldn't have bumped back backers for it if I didn't think if I didn't think it was a sound investment myself. But he was a dreamer. 
His brother Lani was the smart one, the practical one, and some of the staff in the penthouse, plus the guy managing the work in the basement, are all top notch. The company will probably have greater success from a unified vision now that he's gone. And what are your duties now? I mean, the startup, the startup has set up already, so to speak. There's, uh, there's more money to be raised, especially in order to increase production. And part of my job is to make sure that the money raised is well spent. I trust Lonnie more with that than I did Dan. And what about Francesca? Did you know she and Dan were married? No, but I watched Francesca. She is a smart and attractive woman who uses her personality to succeed. She has no formal university degree and from what I learned uh, came from a poor family, but she married a wealthy land developer whom I knew when she was 19. He was older and had made some smart investments including a few through, including a few through me and maybe some that were perhaps under the table. How do you know all this? It's my job to know about people who have money. Not only how much they have and how willing they may be to part with it, but how they got it. Just, as, uh, just to change the subject, where were you Tuesday morning before the murder? In my office. Did anyone see you? I don't know, I didn't notice anyone. I didn't notice anybody. That's it. Oh. He does have a strong motive, but yeah, he's but with but with Lonnie himself, with Lonnie of all people saying that Charles has Acrophobia. Uh, that, yeah, acrophobia. Uh, I think mm. yeah, Lonnie is definitely yeah, he's he's not I, a suspect. Yeah. Mm. And plus, like, Charles didn't, like, to be fair, Charles didn't even, like, have a reason. Like, I mean, he kind of does, but also, like, it's not really a strong motive. Like, not the strongest one we've seen. Uh, yeah, like, he's, like, he definitely prefers Lonnie, but he's not, like, so against Dan that he's willing to kill him. At least from what it seems. Yeah. Yeah. And plus, I don't really see an opportunity for him to kill. And yeah, that too. But like, ignoring the acrophobia thing, it seems like while he definitely like would rather Lonnie be like the head of everything, he doesn't really like hate Dan all that much like he's just kind of like he just thinks he's a bit you know not really as professional yeah and I don't think that's really like a motive to kill mm -hmm. um, well we got one more interview and I lied it wasn't uh, <laughs> it wasn't um Charles it was Pat Oh, okay. Pat is the only one that has not been interviewed. Okay. Alright, um, so... You act as the Killian... Or, uh, you act as the Killian's, uh... Legal counsel, is that right? Yes, I am the lawyer for both of them individually and for their businesses. In this case, Willie Vines, LLC. Will you uh, be representing Lonnie Killian in this murder investigation? I do. I don't think there's any need to, but if he asks me, I'll consult with him or speak on his behalf. That sounds like a very, very big conflict of interest. Yeah. <laughs> That's asking for disbarment. Um. Let's see here. Uh, you have an office in the penthouse? My office is in my home, but I used uh, one of the rooms in the penthouse suites for yourself. 
No, it's a shared space with Mr. Holmes, who I, who like me, has a home office and comes up here only a short time most days. And Mr. Gunther, who is usually in the basement work room, nothing like sharing, or nothing like sharing with two men. One leaves his working models on the desk. The other left a pile of papers out last time. And there's and there's dust everywhere. Were you in Tuesday morning? Did you see them? I saw Mr. Holmes, but I didn't see Mr. Gunther. So German was seen, but Gunther was not seen. I hear, I hear that Dan uh, Killian and uh, Dan Killian and Francesca Farber were married. Who knew that? Until last weekend, no one except me and Dan. Oh, I imagine so because lawyer. <laughs> Don't ever. You never want to hide anything from your lawyer. Yeah. announce it once the business was up and running. They went to the U.S. Open. Uh, uh, they went to the U.S. Open in New York over Labor Day weekend as a sort of a honeymoon. And by Tuesday morning, when we all came back to work, word had leaked out that they were on their honeymoon. Could you prepare Dan Killian's will? And what was in it? Yes, I did the legal preparation and employment contracts for the businesses, or for the business, and the last will and testament of both of both brothers. Naturally, the lion's naturally naturally the lion's share went to uh, to Lonnie and Francesca. The people who bought into the company would uh, be well would be well compensated to the business but the salaried workers like Sherman, Annette, and Helmut had a clause in their contract that they would uh, also receive funds in case of the death of one or both brothers. Okay, so I guess everyone does have a, a um, benefit in the will. Um, and where were and where were you when Dan Killian was killed? Out shopping. Do you know uh, who? Do you know who would have had any reason to kill uh, Dan Killian? I'm a lawyer, not a th not a soothsayer. I've seen enough cases where people have been killed for money, the desire to have more of it, and for revenge, hoping to assuage a perceived uh, wrong wrong done to them. Add to that love, jealousy, power, hate, thrill, and concealment. The need to shut someone up, for starters. Is there anything else I can help you with, officer? Well, that was the end of it. That's the end of that. Yeah. Um, well, let's just see when she left the building. If she left the building. And if she did leave the building, did she come back? I'll be right back. I'm going to the toilet real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. Okay, guys. Let's see what we got. Uh, I'm going to check uh, his chat real quick. Yep, nothing's 
going on right now. But yeah, we'll see what we can accomplish. So. She has an alibi and a very strong one at that. She was not there. She was not in the building at all. She was nowhere near the building. And if we look at the map. is from my knowledge if she was out shopping the nearest shop is like a if she drove well one why because it's Seattle why would you drive in Seattle it's much more worth it to, to walk if she was out shopping in Seattle she would have been in the downtown district and she more than likely would have been at Target which is a about a half a mile quarter, uh, three quarters to half a mile up north northwest and then um Actually, let me give you guys a yeah, because let me just show you how far you gotta travel, how far you gotta go in order to get to the nearest shopping spot. So there's a Second Avenue, and there's a James Street. James Street is on is in Second, and James Street is on the is the intersection that's at Smith Tower. Okay, the uh, the um, uh, crime scene. I'm back. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Pat has a really strong alibi. She was not in the building. Mm. She was nowhere even near the building. She was like, uh, so if she was out shopping, uh, I was explain. I'm explaining this. Like, um, well, yeah. There's there's that, but that's flowers. I doubt she'd be shopping for flowers. She'd probably be shopping for food, which would be one, let's see, one, two, three, four, Wow. Jail. <laughs> there, there's, there, there's the jail. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm not kidding. That's 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 a prison right there. Wow. That's, that's straight where they're going to. It's right right around the corner too. Like. <laughs> Let's see, five. Six. Seven. What street is that? Is that Seneca? Yeah, that's, that's Seneca. Uh, seven. That's a, that's a high school. Eight. That's the, 
art museum. Yeah. Nine. Nine city blocks. She had to travel nine city blocks. And keep in mind, this is a one-way one -way road. Mm. Going that way. Yeah. It takes me 30 minutes. It takes me 30 minutes to walk this one way. Huh. Walk up. It, it, and I have a long stride, but a normal person that, uh, if the average person would, t it would take 45 minutes to an hour to walk that distance. Wow. So, wait, in Seattle, is there any, like, buses that go in, like, in the area? Because like, cause here in England, we have, like, buses that, like, go from stop to stop. Uh, Seattle has... I kid you not, Seattle has the worst rated transit system in the world. Wow. We do got buses, but they are not related. Is that right there, one of them? Yeah, yeah that's one of them. <laughs> transit. Yeah, that's Sound Transit. Um, that, that's the, uh, let's see here. I can't see. That's the 590. That goes all the way to Tacoma, which is not related to this case. <laughs> hmm. Well, yeah, like, if it takes me 30 minutes to 45 minutes to walk that distance, just one way, there's no way in hell she would have been able to yeah. uh, be in anywhere close to the building in the murder time frame. Hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> um... Pat is definitely out of the picture. Yeah. Very, very strong alibi. <laughs> Wait, so what route do buses do there? So, this is more like curiosity for me, honestly. Like, I'm yeah, curious. Like, um, so, any buses that, um, where, yeah. Any buses that, um, whoops. <laughs> Any, any buses that um go yeah any buses that um are leaving seattle um that, that are heading south will go this way and they can only go this way on this road until it ends oh. uh, it goes on the freeway um while all buses if you're going the opposite way they have to be over on this road that road, this road. Well, the, well this, uh, let's see, that, yeah, that's 2nd Avenue. Uh, yeah, 3rd uh, Avenue goes both ways. Goes both ways for transit. 3rd uh, Avenue is a transit road only. Uh, only buses are allowed on that road. Uh, okay. Um, buses and emergency vehicles. Um, the... And then, um, uh, Fourth Avenue is a public road, uh, that, uh, you can only go this way. You, you, you can only go north on this road. Huh. See. And, like, are the stops, like, how, how far, they're like, about, oh. They're about every few blocks. Oh, okay. They're about every few blocks. So, it's, like, um, if, like, a five minute walk five to ten minute walk to each stop hmm oh, i mean that's kind of oh so that's similar to here so yeah oh no never mind yeah yeah like um yeah they yeah the, it's a very unreliable system and one it, and it also it is the one of the hardest um cities to navigate via, by vehicle uh, so it, it is it, it, Seattle is one of those cities where it's better to just travel on foot mm. than be in a vehicle oh, I see I see yeah because uh, uh, if, if someone could argue that uh, that she did take a vehicle but in my mind I'm still gonna call bullshit <laughs> Because I have lived in Seattle basically all my life, and there's no <laughs> way in hell. Uh-uh. 
There is no way in hell that she would just drive a few blocks in Seattle just to go shopping. Yeah. The only reason why you would be driving in Seattle is if you're going to go to the other side of town or go to um, the, the Seattle Center, which is... Um, I'll show you. Okay. So, that's First Avenue. So, the route I take... I'm actually going to show you the route I take. So, I don't usually walk on this road. I walk on... I walk on 4th Avenue. Uh huh. And I go all the way. And keep in mind, I walk this entire distance. I don't <laughs> take the bus. Oh my god. Unless, unless I'm running late for something. But yeah, I would walk all the way this way. Here. See, from, from, from here to. Yeah, from here to the tower, that's already a mile. Yeah, from there to the Seattle Center is about two and a half miles. Um, yeah, and then um, uh, wait, I passed the Westlake Center. Um, let me go back here real quick. Do we do let's do some backtracking? Unload. Thank you. All right. Um, Marion. Spring. Come on. Pike. Yeah. So uh, after I get into this area. I'll go over here. I, I go this way. Or, yeah, over here. Because over here, there's a monorail. But I'll walk underneath the monorail and follow these tracks because these are the tracks right here that are... that. It's a, and this is the sky monorail. This is a track that is above the street. Hmm. And um, it goes all the way to the Seattle Center. It makes a curve and then the Space Needle. That's the Seattle Center. Hmm. Yeah, that's about a three mile walk. Damn. It takes me it takes me about an hour to walk that. that Jesus. An hour or two to walk it. Jesus. But yeah. Christ. Even more even more reason why uh, Pat would not be uh, Pat is not a suspect. <laughs> yeah. And plus like I feel like even if she did take a vehicle, I feel like that wouldn't be enough time to like to like take one, go back and then kill Seattle, like thingy. Seattle uh I can tell from this much. from this map alone I can tell just how much traffic there is. <laughs> shower mm. lunch hour traffic is much more of a nightmare than rush hour morning rush hour because everyone is speeding to go get their lunch <laughs> everyone will be on the road at the same time to get their lunch yeah you're gonna be stuck yeah, so I, you, if, if for god awful reason these designers made Pat the solution, I'm gonna burn this case. <laughs> I'll go 
Part do it on camera. Remember to do it on camera, yeah? That's content. <laughs> I won't do it live, though, because otherwise the people will... in the house that I live with will, will kill me. Oh, okay. Oh, damn it. And then I become the next murder mystery. <laughs> <laughs> uh, join me, brother. <laughs> that really does explain <laughs> yeah that basically explains why uh pat is not a suspect mm. so we we basically hard cleared charles and we, we've hard cleared charles and pat and we've also ruled out suicide yeah So I think number one suspect probably Francesca. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we're not done. Yeah. Because we got a lot more evidence to go through. <laughs> yep. I am gonna put these down. Oh yeah, and um, here's the certificate of marriage. This oh. actually looks like a real marriage certificate. Oh wow. Yeah. is a witness yeah oh yeah, so lonnie it lonnie is a witness to because um in order for the marriage to be official in order for the marriage to go through you have to have two witnesses to sign the document that say that ha they have witnessed the the ceremony take place mm. that's that's the ruling that's the law in the united states in order for a marriage to be official, there has to be two witnesses that can sign the document. Huh. I know because I've had to do this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've had I've had to sign as a witness once. Hmm. Um, so the other one's Pat. Yeah. Because mm. Pat Pat is the lawyer and. Oh right. Um, Pat did mention that. True. Um, that she was the one who witnessed the ceremony. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, right, right, right. So, yeah, Lon oh, so went Lonnie. Oh, through my head. Yes. Yeah, so Lonnie and Pat were the witnesses. Um, they were married in King County, which, of course, is Seattle's in King County. That's a Methodist or Catholic church. Church. Um, anyways. Douglas. Is any of our suspects named Douglas? Or to fill her name. Uh, Douglas is the. Uh... Oh wait, never mind. Douglas would not be it because that's a clerk. 
uh -huh. king county clerk that's it that's it that's, yeah. a, that's a politician so yeah we're not gonna mess with that yeah that's being dumb Yeah, I don't think that's even that's that's supposed to be part of the case. underground begins above ground in 1899 the great seattle fire oh man it's like i'm in high school all over again. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're in history class Like a phoenix from the ashes, a new Seattle was born. This gave uh, city planners an opportunity to fix the issues that plagued the Emerald City's slumber hubs and the uh, squalid uh, conditions its workers faced. Its low elevation and stacked slumber made it especially susceptible to floods, uh, mudslides, and as mentioned, devastating fires. With a clean slate, planners were able to avert future disasters through major, two major changes, fireproof construction and a raised city with uh, proper drainage, which is part of the reason why you see most of the town made out of brick. Most of the city made out of brick. Um... All the buildings that replaced uh, uh, all the buildings that replaced what was lost were built of stone, brick, and cement. Yeah, see, there we go. Um, underneath, a tunnel system was constructed to deal with the rain and tides. So, uh, so prevalent in the Pacific Northwest. Oh wait. So prevalent in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. With a minimum height requirement of 12 feet above sea level, a system of tunnels and walls look, took the form of a labyrinth that winds that winds its way under the city's uh, streets to this day. As um. As the city grew, or as the city above grew into the bustling business center it is still known for, the underground was the perfect place for people with something to hide. It, to hide, gamblers, drug peddlers, prostitutes, and bo bootleggers found uh, found refuge in the hidden in the hidden mazes, which is actually true. There are a lot of process just a lot of prostitution going on in pioneer square <laughs> even to 
today. Um, local politicians determined to fight Seattle's uh, CD reputation enlisted the help of the police to clear these areas of nefarious trespassers and seal the tunnels off to the general public. The tunnels remained sealed as a forgotten secret lurking beneath the streets until 1965 when Bill uh, Spadel Bill Spadel um, Bill Spadel turned his knowledge of local history and geography into a business venture. Bill Spadel's underground tours continues to delight curious um, tourists looking for a glimpse into Seattle's dark past. The tours continue today and are a popular destination for tourists and locals alike. Recently, some businesses in Pioneer Square have taken advantage of the free real estate below their offices to expand their, their square footage. While most businesses have found the usable space perfect for storage, others have noted the advantages of subterranean workspaces, a winery from Napa under, Underwood Cellars has noted the uncanny resemblance in atmosphere to the cellars champagne manufacturers rely on for aging their wines in France. Ytech Wireless Systems, a Seattle startup, has found uh, less radio interference in the in the tunnels than the upper floors in the office and have begun construction of a state-of-the-art R&D facility slated to open in 2023. More and more businesses realize that when digging below, the sky is the limit. What was once an obscure piece of buried history now serves as a labyrinth of possibility for Seattle citizens. Whether you are an amateur historian, business owner looking to expand downward, or just a curious adventurer, the C Seattle Underground is a great place to look. I don't know why that's evidence. Send that over here. We got another in interview log. That's a witness statement, actually. Date and time of the interview September 6th. This is Edith Pendergast. Oh, wait a minute, I think it's the old lady. Yes. This is a witness. Miss Pendergast. It's Miss. It's Mrs. Pendergast. It's Mrs. Pendergast, Sonny. Mr. Pendergast and I were married for 58 years before he was taken from me. You might have heard of him, Alfred Pendergast, aerospace engineer. Uh, no, ma'am. But this, for the record, Mrs. Pendergast, could you tell us how old you are? could, but I don't know if I should. I'm a lady, you know. This is Pender. I'm just pulling your chain, officer. I'm 82 and proud of it. And I'm five foot and I'm five foot one. Used to be taller. If you wanna know how tall, I could look it up. That's okay. Can you please tell me what exactly you saw? I was just sitting there watching the TV. I put the television. I put the television there. So during the during commercials where they they were, 
I took I put the television there. So during commercials where they were selling the things I wasn't interested in, like men's shaving cream or perfumes or those ridiculous uh, kitchen gadgets, I could look out the window. Sometimes I sit here and just look out the window when the TV isn't on. So I'm uh, watching the TV and exactly at one o'clock, all of a sudden, I see this thing fall out of the sky like a sack of like a sack of garbage and then splat. It had it happened so fast I couldn't see what it was until it hit. I could see it was a body or what was left of one. I called 911 and tried to forget what I had just seen. And then you guys come and want me to relive that horrible moment. I'm sorry about that. We just need to collect some facts. What made you say it was exactly one o'clock? I'm watching the television, see? Which I do every day at one o'clock to get the to get the news. And Tex Bradley, he's the newscaster. Oh boy. Of course. Tex Bradley is the real name. <laughs> Tuesday, and here's the latest news. Of course, if it's not Tuesday, he'll say another day. Anyway, here's the latest news. And then, here's the latest news, and then splat. That's how, how's that for the latest news? I called 911, like I said, and it and didn't look out the window again until I could tell from the noise that the body was being taken away. Oh, splat. Oh, splat. Drat. Um, how am I going to... S oh, splat. Drat. Um, how am I going to sleep tonight? So, yeah. So, I, uh... I'd say that's a pretty, um... Valid testimony. That it happens exactly at 1 p.m. So we have a time of death. Exactly at 1 p.m. Yeah, if it happened exactly at 1 p.m., let's just go ahead and do a... Let's go through this one more time.
it. There we go. So let's see. I'm looking for repeating numbers. And we're also going to pull up the gaps. What time is it? It's 3.40. And we've been going on it. Yeah, we've been going on it for four hours. Almost. Yeah. Okay, you know what? myself I'm going to call it a night because um, I do actually have some stuff I want to get done tomorrow or technically today so uh, when uh, ever Red gets back and if he listens to this later thank you Red for letting me join and yeah <clears throat> Perhaps Red and I can continue this sometime later, and we can figure out, we can finalize who did this. Yeah, right now, and yeah, this is actually a good, uh, good stopping point anyways, so, or a good cliffhanger. Um, so right now, our two biggest suspects are um, uh, Francesca and uh, Lonnie. But that's destined to change next time. So, yeah. Thank you guys so much uh, for sticking around. And yeah. I will, for those of you in uh, Red's chat, I'll see you, hopefully I'll see you guys later. I, uh, yeah, keep flapping those wings, Red's chat, bye-bye.